Okay, organic chemistry. Fast and furious or short and sweet. So it's just like Legos. You just it's a systematic naming and a functional group with the with a root. So the first one, the general category, they're called alkanes. This alk basically means a hydrocarbon, and ane means they're all single bond. So it's just a, a big, long car carbon chain surrounded by hydrogen. And when there's no double or triple bonds, it means that it's been saturated with hydrogen. You've probably heard the word saturated, like uh, saturated fats. There's no double or triple bonds. Consequently, all those are long, straight chains. When you have a double or triple bond, it creates a little kink, and they don't stack up well. So if they stack up well, they're solids at room temperature. But if they're not stacking up well, they're still liquids. So fats are saturated because they stack up well, and oils, which are runny, have kinks in them because of double bonds. So all of these are single bonds, and it ends in ain. Here's a typical one. They're just straight, yep. So here's a typical one. Remember, carbon makes four bonds, so it's either bonded to another carbon or another hydro or a hydrogen. No single bonds. I'm sorry, no double or triple bonds. So what's the hybridization? One, two, three, four, sp3. Really easy. Now the naming scheme works like this. Methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, and then from there on, five carbons is pent, hex, hep, etc. And then you just slap on the ain suffix. So you just count the carbons. So what's the name of this one? Two carbons is eth, it's an ain, ethane. So methane, ethane, propane, etc. So all of these from here down are ones you know. Here's how you remember the first ones. Me, eat, peanut, butter. Okay, so methyl's one carbon, ethyl's two, propyl's three, butyl's four. From here on out, it's the same. Unfortunately, there's an old naming scheme floating around that many of us still rely on, like acetic acid, is, that's the wrong name. That's not the systematic name. And that's this prefix, acetyl. Some people don't like the word ac, so they say acetyl. So if that's the case, it's me eight peanut butter. It's still two carbons. So either me eat or me eight peanut butter, and then everything else is pent, hex, everything else you know. Alkanes, no double, triple bonds, and you just know the prefix. If there's a double bond, it's an ene. And you literally just put the prefix on with ene. So this is F, because it's two carbons. Hey, wait, how come there's no methene? Hydrogen can't double bond, and there's no other carbon to double bond with, so there's no methene. So this one is not saturated, because here's a place that you could push hydrogen onto it. That's called, if you've ever seen that word, um, hydrogenated. Hydrogenated fats are double bonds that they push hydrogen on, and they make them into saturated fats. Not very good for you. So this, um, the same naming scheme, without the me, eat peanut butter, and e. Now, I just put one double bond, but in truth, there can be more than one, and so you have to stipulate where the, the ene falls. So if you have, let's say, four carbons, and there is the double bond, you always number from left to right, and yeah, there's hydrogens here. You always, whoops, <laughs> that looks like a hydrogen. You always number from left to right, so when I was in college, you just named where the double bond started. It's the number two carbon. It's one, two, three, four, so it's bu. And there's one double bond, so it's ene. So it's two butene. But somewhere between when I graduated and now, they said, well, we should put the number two next to the double bond word. So now it's called but two ene. <laughs> Honest. Yeah. So if there's a really long carbon chain, <laughs> Those are nine. What's that one called? Nine. 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 Which is it? Is it an ene or an ane? This is no ene. A no name. <laughs> but if we put in a double bond here, that would be one, two, three, known three ene. And if we had another one, we'd have to say that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You see how tedious organic gets? That's why some people hate it. That's way beyond the scope of our class. 
for well, you guys just need to know that if it, there's an E, there's a double bond somewhere. If it's got a triple bond, it's the ines. So here's ine with two carbons, so it would be called 2-ine. I mean, sorry, F-ine. So this is ine. It's pronounced ine. So again, it's unsaturated. It's a triple bond. Let's not worry about multiple triple bonds. SP hybridization, because it's 180 degree bond angles. Remember hydrogen, hey guys? Remember hydrogen, hey guys? Remember hydrogen doesn't hybridize? It can't. It only has S uh, orbital electrons. How do you remember which comes first? It's single, double, triple, because if you listen, it sounds like A, E, I, like the vowels in the English alphabet. A's and E's and I's. A's, E's, I's. Say again. Yeah, they're unsaturated means that you could force hydrogen and then you'd be back to two carbons and an alkane, so S thing. Um, the, this is a common mistake that I want you not to make on the AP exam. There's a word called isomer. Iso is the same. The, it means same. It's Latin for same. And mer just means like a particle. Same particle. So an isomer, here's one, two, three, completely surrounded by hydrogen, so it's propane. If you, <coughs> excuse me, there's a total of three, six, seven, eight carb, uh, hydrogens. If you remove one, two, three, four, five, six, if you remove two hydrogens, then they can bend around and um, connect together. It's in a cyclic form, and it's still three carbons, so it's called cyclopropane because there's no double bonds. So it sounds like they're the same. So it sounds like they could be isomers of each other. So here's an isomer. One, two, three, four. That's what? And when it's all in a chain, it's called normal. Normal butane. But what if I took that last carbon and put it there? This is called isobutane because it's the same on either side. So you guys, these are isomers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The same, you guys, excuse me, Jen. The same chemical formula, but they have a different arrangement, and therefore they have different chemistry. They're very different, but this is the mistake kids make in the past. It would say, list other isomers, and they would just bend them around and say the cyclo version, but they're not isomers because they don't have the same chemical formula. Here's pentane. This is cyclopentane. It's short hydrogens. They're not isomers. They kind of look like they are, though, so be careful about that. Do you all understand what I'm saying? If you can take them apart and rearrange them, same chemical formula, then they're isomers. They have different chemistry, though. Sorry? Say again. Isobutane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no other way to make it iso, but Christine, if, if, if we had a whole bunch more chains, we could put this thing somewhere else along the chain, right? We could remove that one, put it there, or there, or there, or there. Then it's a different kind of iso. Okay, this is the chemistry. This is like assembling Legos. You have a whole bunch of different colored Legos. These are different colored Legos with chemistry. So you have some chain, hydrocarbon chain, we're just going to call it R, and then you just snap on different functional groups and their chemistry changes. For example, OHs are alcohols. So if there's an OH, you name it pent, if there's five, a null, pentanol. So how can you draw that? Five carbons and an OH, and then fill in the rest with hydrogens. So you can already draw a whole bunch of organic compounds. Ethanol is two carbons and an OH. Hexanol, six carbons and an OH. So what happens in water here? What is this? What about this? It, it's very polarized and it makes hydrogen bonds in water or with other ethanol or methanol or whatever the alcohol is. This guy is what? Hydrocarbon, hydrocarbon. So polar, nonpolar. Nonpolar, the dipole cancel. 
So those are analogous to each other as these are, aldehydes and ketones. This thing is called a carbonyl. We just swapped out a hydrogen here for this R. This could be C, 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 C. This could be C or C, C or C, 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 C. And it could be just other stuff because it's, it's R on one side, a carbonyl, and then we just swapped out R for an H there. Exactly, yeah, we just added the H. Uh huh, Jeff? No, 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 no. An ester has an extra oxygen in it. Good catch, though. They smell good. They have really good smells, like peppermint oil and stuff. This one, you've got to know, though. Carboxylic acid, you write it C O O H. Sideways. This is the first CO, it's a double bond, a carbonyl, and then another polarized oxygen. Yeah, um, can't, can't? I, I have it, I think. Yeah, this would be one more carbon, I think. But then what about what's the naming of Well, you don't have to worry about the naming. But they do end in al. I'll show you right here. Just a sec, okay? Halides have um, uh, halogens. This one is one you got to not freak out on. It's going to be this big, long name like triethylamine or something. It doesn't matter. This, if this were an H, what would this be? Ammonia, Ammonia which is our go-to what? <laughs> our weak base. So this is just a base. If you took AP Vito, you know this. Proteins are made of amines and carboxylic acids, and so they're called amino acids. That's where that came from. Okay, alcohols are really polar because of this polarized, this polarized oxygen. They do hydrogen bonding, so therefore really soluble. If this it gets really long with carbons, it's no longer very soluble because this HC chain is not very, um, it's not polar. So same naming scheme, meth, eth, prop, but, and you end with anol. Sometimes you might see the, the prefix written as methyl, methyl alcohol, ethyl alcohol, all the same stuff. Um, these guys are nonpolar. They don't have any hydrogen bonding, so they don't dissolve in water. That's the kind of question you'd be asked. You wouldn't have to go, oh, that's an ether. No, it would be, here's an ether. Discuss its polarity or its bonding in water, solubility in water. Yeah, you don't have to worry about the naming. Carbonyl group, a little bit polar, but it doesn't do hydrogen bonding. It's got to be H with Na. This isn't hydrogen bonding. There's the naming scheme catch. Methanol, ethanol, don't worry about that, but don't overlook that that's methanol, not methanol. Your brain might go, methanol. Ketones, we don't have to worry about that. Carboxylic acid, I believe this is definitely fair game. The naming scheme is kind of old. I still call it acetic, but don't worry. The AP would tell you both. They would say ethanoic, also known as acetic. Um, Esters, we don't have to worry about esters. Halides, again, I just don't want you to freak out if you saw, what's iodopropane? Well, it's a prop with an iodide attached to it. Oh. Same with these guys. These are all bases. They're basic in water. So what happens when you do this? What kind of a reaction is this? Acid base. So what's the name of this? If this is methylamine, this is methyl ammonium. Okay, so it's the same thing we've been doing. I already told you about isomers. Wait, I have to see if you can figure something out. This is normal butane, isobutane. Maleic is called the cis, and fumaric is trans. Notice how these are across. This means across. This means same. Here's uh, lactic and uh, uh, R and S lactic. They're two different chemical reactions, so our chemical compounds. So why do we care about our gas? Wait, I have to show you this because there's a whole bunch of all these organic compounds in our body, and here's an interesting one. Do you know this word? Oh, yeah. Poopery. Okay, this is poopery. You spray it. You can't really read this, but down here it says, before you go, toilet spray. So I'm going to show you this. This would be so cool if it were the AP exam question. So here is how, what is some data. It's made of limonene which is orange oil, smells really good. Limonene is methyl, there's one carbon, methyl, two carbons, ethyl, two, three more carbons, cyclohexene, more carbons. What does this tell you about this compound? It's nonpolar and look at its density. So what does that tell you? 
Floats in water. Floats in water. And it separates from water. So what? It sits on top of the water. And it smells good. Limonene smells good. And what, <laughs> what happens to the vapor pressure? You guys, what happens to the vapor of the water? You, it can't get out. It's got a coating. Here's limonene. Smells good. Seals in the toilet water. <laughs> 